trying to improve at chess, what should you do? How can you learn the most at the shortest time? And here's my advice. Seek complex middle games against strong players. This is where you really learn the craft of chess. And um, this is what I did in 2019 against Gabriel Sagishan, very strong uh, Armenian grandmaster, a uh, little man, uh, but a uh, big player. Uh, I played him uh, three times, and the first two games I played rather solidly, and it was a draw. Uh, and uh, the reason I did that was because he is a better player than I am. He's got like a hundred Elo point more on average uh, throughout the years. And so I know that, uh, <laughs> that if, if we get into a heavy uh, battle, I might end up with the short straw. But okay, this was a, an open tournament, so winning was important. And if I lost, well, okay. If I, I drew, it was almost the same. You have to win and win and win and win if you want to win big opens. But also, uh, I decided to, to, to stop trying to control it against uh, the good players and say, okay, I play to learn. And this is what I recommend. If you want to improve a chess, play to learn. So here we go. Um, I'm white against Gabriel Sargisian. It's... The 2019 in Elsinore, an extra grand chess open. And um, and here, uh, if I was not uh, sort of aggressive inclined, I would probably play knight f3 or d3 and go for a Catalan or a, a Queen's Indian or something like that. Uh, but uh, I decided to allow the Nimso Indian and play the Rubinstein variation with e3 and that always leads almost always leads to complex middle games um, where you have a big chance of losing against strong players but also we have chances of winning because the positions become unbalanced um, Sargisian is one of the players I'm following because uh, I think he has an elegant uh, nice good technical style it's it's very clearly i understand everything he does he just does it a little better than me and that's always nice to to see these guys uh, play so i always uh, look at his games and and sometimes i also try to copy his openings ideas um, because he's of course is a professional player playing all the time for a living um, and this is uh, yeah this is all normal and here he takes takes and c5 and castle and if he takes on d4 and play b6 we will have the so-called Karpov variation which i guess is uh, the main line in the nimso indian these days uh, instead he tries to get something a little bit different trying to confuse me with bishop d7 uh, the idea is, is is very simple to to Put it here instead on b7 and then play knight here. Um, we are fighting uh, for the center and we are looking at uh, the sort of the constellation of the pawn structure. Who's uh, who's getting the good bishop? Who's getting the majority? Who's controlling squares? Uh, are there any uh, weak pieces, weak pawns, um, weak complexes of on any kind of color? Uh, all these kind of things can we transpose into an attack? In in short term, a very complex uh, middle game, which is the perfect learning ground or training ground, you might say, uh, for improving your understanding and your playing strength. So this was on purpose that I went for for this kind of position, uh, even though I know that uh, Sakishin is probably a, a little bit better in this position than I am, um, and I'm. But maybe I had some confidence by making two draws against him uh, earlier. I play a3, um, asking the bishop uh, what you want to do. Um, it might not be the best move, actually, uh, because he might want to take here anyway. And it would be nice if he, if he had to take without me playing uh, a3, because it slightly weakens the white squares here, actually. So, And also, this move is no longer possible. Okay, and bishop c6, and and black is um, is having a slightly better structure, but I having a slight overweight in the center, but it's not so easy to mobilize. Uh, I'm also uh, experiencing uh, some problems with the white squares uh, due to um, 
My uh, knight has been left the board for his black squared bishop, which gives him a natural uh, slight edge on these colored uh, complex. And um, but I do also have the bishop pair, so it's a very very interesting double edge position. It's asymmetrical as it comes. Here I play this move. This may not be the best. I might queen e2 might be better, but um, I don't know. Uh, and and the idea of course to to push e4 and white is of course hoping to launch an attack on black's king. Uh, if he can create a position where uh, I have a clear space advantage on the king side uh, and, and get my bishops to, to go go down on his king, it could be very nasty. Also a bishop uh, getting to something like here could be pretty nice. Sometimes it can also go here and point this way. Uh, meanwhile, uh, black will try to exploit the holes in, in my queen side and the white squares. Um, and I'm trying to, to, to push this, and of course he will not allow that. If, if I'm allowed to play e4 without uh, giving any concessions, um, I'm immediately uh, clearly better. So he has to do something, and he played here, and I thought this bishop might be a little bit um, problematic. So I said, okay, I just moved, I, I, that's why I played rook e1. I was very happy about this maneuver, I thought it was really clever, because now I can, I'm can. i threatening to go uh, knight d2 and e4 um, uh, without the bishop being on e2, so, so the rook and the knight is supporting e4, but it's also wide to move, and he plays queen a5. Uh, and he's threatening uh, this pawn, and and this is one of the things that's that's always nice when you play against strong players is they have excellent timing uh, for for the counterplay. Um, so even though I thought my my rook e1 bishop f1 maneuver was was smart, his maneuver is probably smarter. So okay, but anyway, it was not a big deal with the uh, with this um, this. Uh, Bishop, this e4, because I thought bishop can be here, and I can sometimes can even go here and play a little bit different. But here he comes up with a very strong move, uh, and highlighting, sort of highlighting the my my that the move a3 was much more weakening than it it appeared, because he comes with queen b6, um, hitting here, and of course if I could play something like queen b3. Because a queen uh, exchange would be fine uh, with the bishop pair uh, and, and overweight in the center. But I cannot because it's uh, it's not covered on b3. Um, rook a2 looks extremely um, uh, sort of unsound and he probably goes, he made my take and I'll have to take with the e pawn. And that was not the plan because if you take with c pawn, bishop d5 hits the rook and if the rook goes, the bishop is lost. So rook a2 is not possible and queen moves don't look so good either because where are you gonna go with those with that queen? If, if you go uh, here, uh, you give up more uh, white squares and you give up the plan. This is no longer possible if you go there. Um, if you go um, queen c1, then rook c8 is coming, and it's it might feel unpleasant on this um, this diagonal. So what to do? And bishop c1. Well, I was trying to play for a win, so but I found some sort of solution, but it's also pretty dangerous. I play rook e2, um, covering the and getting ready to to go on with the position here i'm i'm probably already planning another maneuver 91 and f3 and e4 so uh, black decides to to take here and and we now have a very very double edge position white has the pure bishop pair and a huge overweight in the center but his structure is of course uh, now in three pawn islands and, and black structure is clearly better. Also, uh, with the weaknesses in my pawn structure, the knights will almost always find good squares. This is a general rule with, uh, with knight that if you have sort of a very smooth pawns rolling forward, then they can push away the knights. But here he, they will probably find some holes in my, uh, my, my pawn structure. Because when they, they go forward, with especially the double pawn on, on f3, uh, it will leave holes uh, on, on other squares. Okay, qu the queen has done his job, uh, getting back, 
uh, rook is very clumsy on uh, on e2 so i'm basically just trying to 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 get my position into play um, and he's playing the rooks in mobilizing and and he of course understands that white's plan is is pretty clear he wants to attack on the king side. Um, there's no other way, where uh, place where where I can play. And this also looks uh, natural. I'm clearing the way for a rook to the d file, and I'm getting into this diagonal that that I, the rook really wants. Um, and and Sagician is is quick to uh, to get his knights to the king side, uh, ready to probe. And all these moves look very natural uh, here and here and rook a c8 and rook d1 and i was kind of um i was i was mm, slightly uh, sort of optimistic here i thought that okay i have an open file with the rook i have bishop pair and overweight in the center and okay it's not so easy to move those pawns because uh, f4 would weaken something and h4 also weaken something and e4 would weaken the f four square so so getting forward it's not so easy but uh, i don't see the the bishops are holding up but here that comes up with a very strong concept uh, which looks dangerous i wouldn't be afraid to play they c4 and and this of course is 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 with the idea that uh, that bishops don't work so well in in very close position like this and he's trying to make this bishop bad and he's kind of succeeding uh, so and and this is is often the, the the case if you can make one piece bad then the attack will run out of steam and this is what he's he's hoping but he, of course sometimes the tigers break free and the rooks and the bishop comes in on his king and he will be blown away and this was i was hoping that was one of the cases but he and meanwhile he has a very easy plan uh, you want to undermine here and go forward here uh, with with some issues so get the rook out knight in here attacking this pawn uh, and of course uh, e4 is not so much fun uh, due to, uh, to 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 this square here so that's makes this uh, majority not so strong as it seems rook d3 there might be something on the h file i was still hoping well praying that my attack would be strong um, and so I'm just basically putting everything on red here and uh, charging forward saying okay if I'm, his king side is not protected by that many pieces if I get to to get my things going for it um, it might be fun uh, and he gets his queen to, to, to start getting ready to, to go in and here comes the counterplay b4 oops b4 and I think so to be honest, black has probably won the strategic battle. And this, the, the, the big, uh, really interesting thing is it, it all looked very natural and, and normal. And, and, and it seemed that it was dangerous for black, but somehow I'm just not really um, getting it here. The, the attack is not really dangerous and this bishop is, is bad. So maybe allowing c4 was a mistake uh, by my part. Um, Take, take, and uh, I play f5. I thought this was smart, that um, that I could, um, could, could could get my bishop out going, and uh, I'm also uh, slowly getting to 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 start generating some threat. At the least, I'm I'm threatening the knight at the moment here. Um, so it's it, the bishop looks strong, but. He has this uh, annoying move uh, just taking here. And the thing is, I don't want him to have connected pass pawns here. Uh, his king is, is too safe for that, so I can't allow it. And there's always some uh, nasty stuff here, uh, suddenly threatening b1 with e. So I I'm, I have to, to, to go, and he's got a strong, two strong pawns here. Um, which which is 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 a serious thing, um, and here comes uh, the pin, the counterplay, very annoying move, and another very strong move, 
because it still seems like, okay, uh, it could be dangerous, I'm threatening the knight, where will you, will you go? Um, Rook might come um, to h5, and if I can just get the other bishop going or win the c-pawn, I will be fine, and then comes, oops. And the thing is, he doesn't need two c-pawns. One pawn is, is more than enough. Uh, and and the, the problem is, I don't want to part with the bishop pair, but I don't also have problems uh, allowing the knight to, to be there. And if I take on c3, f2 is hanging. So if this, uh, then he takes here. So I'm I'm getting outplayed here, uh, to be honest. Um, I played f3 and he took, uh, took, and uh, and we see that now the position is already so open so that, that my uh, succeeding here is not so good. By the way, uh, after this move, I could take uh, here but but it's extremely annoying because the white squares would be uh, totally weak and the c pawn would be uh, extremely strong so i'm i didn't dare to do that and 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 i can't even take c3 because uh, there, there comes something like this uh, with the bishop gone and and he gets the exchange back with a totally winning position where i'm sitting with with this uh, horrible piece down here um, so I, gave, I took away this square, which turned out to be important all the game, and um, and in, um, and of course he cannot cover here, um, so he goes for the open file. He gets out of the, the attack, take, and the ending is of course in Black's favor here. I'm. Um, and my king side and my pawn structure is is bad. His knight is is just more a better piece than my um, my my poor bishop. And but, but taking is also not so much fun. So so this is is already a bad ending. Uh, I decided to okay. We didn't have much time left. It was a difficult game. So I decided to say okay. Uh, maybe I can st I can still get an attack if I can get h5 in. Then uh, uh, this uh, rooks here made make sense. Rook b5, another strong move, uh, timing uh, the counterplay, and uh, and this is again very typical for uh, for strong players. They are very good at just timing the counterplay. Of course, h5 he just takes the bishop and says, okay, I have a much better rook ending, probably winning. So. Okay, I have to, to go, and here he said it, it turns out the threat is not really big of h5, so he takes this pawn. And of course I'll go here and take, and, uh, and king h8 is instant loss, so just to go here, the problem is there is no mate, there is no attack, there is, well, de facto nothing here. And the h pawn looks strong, but it's not strong. So, took here. But I do have some counterplay, and now we're getting to a rook ending. Um, even though black has played really good defensive chess, um, it's still not uh, clear how he's going to win. And um, I found out I had to give him a check, getting the king away. Take and take. And here I, I, I was realizing that the rook ending was extremely difficult for me. Extremely difficult. But it's not lost. Uh, I just you just have to find one good move. Luckily for me, the time control was over here. Uh, the problem, of course, is a game like this takes a lot of energy, and it's clearly to the advantage of the professionals that play maybe uh, 80 to 130 games a year against strong players, they're used to having this kind of tension for a long period of time. Whereas for me, that, that people keep finding uh, strong counter-attacking resources like uh, Gabriel did in this game, that's not that normal. Uh, so I'm not used to be having to, being forced to, to find these kind of moves all the time. Uh, anyway, I did find a very strong move for white here. Uh, the only move to, to, to keep me in the game, actually, because the, the thing is my, my king and, uh, is, is very bad, all my pawns are bad, and they're not dangerous, and the c pawn is extremely dangerous. So I really have to, to find a, a thing um, here, and I found this move. 
very nice move uh, attacking um, oops yeah he did play that but um, just make some arrows here so this the thing is um, he does not want to uh, to give up this pawn, but I need this C pawn to go. If I can get that rid of that, uh, I'm I'm more or less safe. So I'm 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 trying. I'm, if I it doesn't matter if I lose the F or H pawn. If I can get the C pawn, uh, I'm get without my king being made it, I will make a draw. So so he has to take. Otherwise, uh, the, the the rooks. If he for instance go go here, something like this. Um, I will just get all my 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 rooks behind these pawns and uh, and uh, something like this. I'll just I think uh, oops that was not right. Um, I don't I don't remember what I had to do. But anyway, the c pawn is not dangerous anymore. I might play, even play f4 or h5 or something. H5 here is actually so he will have to take go forward. Anyway. He had to take, take, and rook c5. And we know this uh, concept. Get the rook behind the pass pawn. It's a good idea. Always a good idea. What now? Well, there is only one way to stop. The h pawn is uh, is not good enough. Um, which I realized here is that there is no check. If uh, I, 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 I was trying to calculate after rook d4, the thing is, if I go, if I go for, with the runner here, he simply goes with the runner too, and after this move and this move, um, he would go here, and there's, a, there's of course this serious threat. There's only one check here, and he will go here. And there are no checks. And next move is c2 to c1, queening. So that was that was the problem. But it's all is not lost. I played rook a8, force c3, rook a1, king f6, king d2, king d5, king f3, c2, all forced, rook c1, rook c6. And um, and this position is sort of interesting uh, because it's not lost. It looks bad, uh, and I, I did manage to lose it. And I think I was tired, uh, or maybe I don't know my rook endings good, uh, well enough. Um, the thing is that black can actually not take this without losing the c pawn, transposing into a drawn rook ending. I somehow thought I had to go to be active with the king, but that was wrong. I should have stayed on g2. I should simply have stayed on g2 and h2, uh, or h3 and h2, or something like that, uh, or so, uh, to to avoid uh, not not h2, g2 and g1 maybe even. Um, so in this position, this move actually draws, because the problem for black is that he wants to do this, but then comes h6, and um, and I will get the C pawn. So he, he can't make progress here. Um, something like this. I just go here. And uh, it's the same if he takes. I play h6. And uh, and I will get get the, uh, the C pawn. I didn't play that. I played this move, which looked natural. I thought it didn't matter. But it does matter. Because here, black has a very strong move. Rook a3, and it's all over. Uh, I'm not getting into any of the drawn positions. King d4, f5, and my king is cut off uh, in, in this kind of, uh, well, it's, is that called vertical or horizontal? Uh, I think horizontal. Uh, cut off, and, and there's, there's nothing I can do here. He just keeps... And he will always uh, put the king down. The king can never come back to to save it. So I resigned here. Um, and of course, uh, Sagisian went on to be in the top top three in the tournament. And I went into the dark. Um, but it was an interesting game. And 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 I think this is the way you have to go if you want to improve. And 
and try. I will probably not be able to follow Sargisian uh, very often in this kind of, of middle complex middle games, but uh, if by trying, I learn a lot. And that's my recommending, uh, recommendation for you for today. This was GM Talks. I hope you enjoyed this session, uh, this uh, video, uh, and uh, see you back soon. Thank you.